look horrific. There's hair coming out of my face. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to talk today about a guide to buying houseplants for each room in your house, sort of like not just for what they look like, um, but for where you're going to put them in your home. So many people have different houses, different rooms they can fill, a space available to them, etc. Some people just have a bedroom, some people just have like a bed set, some people, some people have formal home with like a dining room, living room, da, 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 da. really want less space because it's less money to fill the place with plants but I mean, lots of plants are easy to grow they're tough as anything but there's still a risk that you put them in the wrong place they'll go brown and die so you've just got to think about placement of these plants and buying plants for a room not just buying plants because they're on offer if that makes sense so you've got to think about exactly where you're gonna put it what conditions those are and how to care for this plant that you're you know you're it's your plant you're in charge of it so please don't kill them because they're fragile things and they just, they're only asking for a few simple things really, so as soon as you understand those, you'll have thriving plants, you'll have to propagate them, send them to friends, grow more and more, and just enjoy it. One, warmth. How warm is the room you're putting it in? Obviously, warmest rooms, we're talking bathroom, kitchen, living room. Living room because you live in it. If you don't have the space available, we're not talking about living room, bathroom, etc. Maybe you live in halls at university, maybe you just rent a room, that will be your warmest room because you'll be living in it most of the time. So when I say living room, I mean room you live in most of the time. I'm not generally speaking about a five bedroomed house with an actual lounge. I'm just talking about your living area, just to keep that clear. Um, but obviously the warmest rooms in the house, you need plants that are tropical plants that are suited to this, that will thrive in these conditions. And the colder rooms in the house are like a spare room, a dining room, you know, sometimes a bathroom if you only shower like once a day um, and it doesn't have a radiator or next to a window, because obviously the big bit of glass will get colder than just being on a shelf. And other cold areas, like the hallway can get quite cold, by the front door that'll be cold. And now next we're talking about light. So light is really important. You don't want to always put plants on a windowsill. I know, trick. Because when the indirect light and direct light is very confusing. The way I'm going to explain it is like windowsill or not windowsill. So windowsill would be direct light and that would be an east or west facing windowsill that gets light for most of the day or south facing. And indirect light is like just putting it on a shelf on a bookcase that's near a window. We're talking like two to three meters near it. And then three, we're talking about the water levels. So in a bathroom, in a kitchen, we're going way up with those water levels. Humidity as well, because if you put your uh, plant on the side of the bath, you're most likely to get it watered because it's in there and because of the moisture in the air that will settle on the soil. Sorry, I just had a notification I'm getting ASOS parcel delivered because I need jeans. I need jeans yesterday. I wear jeans for work and they just, I just need jeans right now. I have holes in them everywhere. I cut a hedge trimmer through my leg and it literally, just, I should have been wearing trousers. I'm gonna get this shit, I mean, I might, I'm gonna have to learn to beat because I'm gonna get too relaxed in these videos and just swear. Um, <laughs> I put a hedge trimmer through my jeans and they just shredded and now I'm having to wear thermal leggings just to hide the fact that my black jeans are literally like cut off like I know it's the trend to have like holes in your jeans but like so yeah water levels and also where you're gonna notice the plants so where you're gonna keep them watered most so your living area uh, bedroom living room whatever you're gonna take note of the plants that are sort of the bigger ones or the ones in saucers the ones that you can water easily but don't forget about those little ones that you might have neglected to put a saucer under or one tuck behind like the TV or your laptop or behind some books on a shelf, like just remember that they're there and just take care to water them because all the plants need water even in winter. So water leads on to humidity, so the bathroom kitchen will be way more humid because you're cooking on the hob, obviously you're in the shower, they're less ventilated. Living areas are most likely to be dry because you've got the radiators on and that's a dry heat or your bedroom dry heat. We're also talking about food today, so I'm still going through what plants need for goodness sake. So I've just got some basic miracle Grow plant food. Um, I do also use home base own, but this was on offer, so I got it on a cheaper deal. I think this was three pounds, maybe something. I'll have to link that below because I'm not sure how much I paid for that because I bought a million plants at the same time. So it came to a lot more money than three pounds. 
But yeah, uh, this I found works really well. Uh, and so does the home base own one actually. And also we need to talk about air. So if it's a ventilated area, obviously by the front doors more ventilated, by windows more ventilated. Try to, I know radiators are usually put under windows, which I still find weird because that's where you lose the most heat. But radio, so try not to put too many plants on window sills. And then, and then we need to talk about the attention they need. So as I was saying, you don't want to put a plant on a bookshelf that needs a lot of attention, like pruning out dead leaves, etc. Most plants, most house plants thrive on just being at, like literally neglected. Um, there are some that need constant watering just to check you're not over watering them, but most of them can deal with going a bit droopy and then being fed again. I wouldn't say it's wise, but I'd say, you know, people that are busy, people at uni, full-time work, and they've just got a few plants in their room, it's probably better in most cases to let it, like with the popular house plants at the moment, to let them dry out slightly if you haven't got time to water them. Definitely neglect them rather than be over fussy. But what do I know? Um, <laughs> well, something because I'm preaching about it. Now we can actually finally crack on with the plants I suggest for each room. So just remember those um, important things, the warmth, light, water, humidity, food, air, and attention. How many things is that? Seven, seven things. I mean, the attention, humidity, and water, you know, some of the things like coincide, but yeah. But if we're talking about kitchen plants or bathroom plants, now these have to be sort of tropical plants. They have to like moisture. They have to love heat because it gets quite hot. Um, and it has to like sort of water, moisture in the air, humidity. And these are actually areas that are often overlooked. So with, so your kitchen, bathroom, hallway, and your like spare room, dining room. I mean, well, this is really grand, but I'm talking about like a kitchen area or a bathroom area. You know, I'm not talking about a mansion. I'm talking about the area you've got available and obviously that is still put into sections hopefully so you might not be able to put plants in all of them but this still might apply for you because I know lots of people rent and they have smaller rooms or just one room one bathroom kitchen diner so that sort of thing so just choose what's applicable to you um, and don't think about it being an entire room separate from everything because the conditions still in that you know one meter by one meter area are still those conditions it just whatever size it's on just means you buy more or less of these plants. Kitchen and bathroom plants, I recommend, and I'll put the list and links to these. I recommend, I've got a list of these actually, I might just admit to that because I'm not gonna remember these. Um, cast iron plant, because that literally survives anything. Air plants, like I was saying, the little um, two sandra things that don't have soil, they're quite relatively easy, you can put them on the shelf. Uh, Sansevieria, which is a snake plant, that's really common. Everyone will probably have one of those. Those are as tough as old boots, will last anything. Um, spider plant, that's good for a bathroom or kitchen. Petonia, which is a lovely, lovely plant. Uh, th these are easy to care for and you only have to water it once it droops. And then we've got a peace lily, which is also really common and a really lovely plant. And they like sort of the humidity and everything. And then aloe vera, that's a good plant. Orchids, they're great plants for the bathrooms. Uh, but obviously you like to show them off and I've just had a second blooming on one of my orchids can you bloody believe it I can't believe it at all so I've had to put that in the living room just to show it off obviously no one notices because I've got a million plants and it's not an achievement to people that don't really know that it's an achievement so I'm just sort of secretly showing off often just eyeing it up when people are around like oh my god look at my orchid but no one cares there's also Hoyas, which are good trailing plants for the bathroom because they create different levels. Uh, the Tradescantia group, that's really good for bathroom and kitchen. And then Peperomias, they're good for the bathroom and kitchen. So all of these th things together create a lovely little sort of micro environment, little atmosphere, and they all like tropical, humid things. There's loads more plants that suit this type of area. Um, but I'd say the, first, the top three I'd go for, for a bathroom, are Orchids, Tradescantia, and Hoyas. And I think, with those in there, that gives you different foliage, different levels, different light. If you want statement pieces for the bathrooms, the bigger plants that you can get are large leaf figs, philodendron, and Boston ferns. Now we're gonna talk about hallways and spare rooms and dining rooms. I mean, I'm reading from a book, it's my own notes. It's really rude, I can't show you. In fact, I might have just shown you by accident. I can't show you the cover. It's from my aunt. Classic. Um, so hallway, spare rooms, dining rooms. So here we're talking less humidity, we're talking less light, uh, less heat, because they tend to be the colder areas of the house. So things that thrive here, like statement pieces, are like thickest elasticas, they've got big broad leaves, calatheas, container palms, 
Dracenias, Begonias, the ZZ plant. Yeah, it's the ZZ plant. Everyone's probably got one of those, but they're really nice and they get quite big. Um, these are all big statement plants. So you'd probably only have one one of these and do try to like plant in ones or threes or fives so you have a nice odd number. See monsters, which are cheese plants. They're really common, everyone has those. You get spider plants, petonia, peace lilies. They can all go in the hallway as well. Uh, it's choosing what works in your hallway. You can end up buying some plants thinking they're suitable for an area and you have to reassess, but obviously they're not nailed to the ground, so that's fine. Um, also neglected are bedrooms and creeping figs, maidenhair ferns, Chinese evergreens. They're good for bedrooms as well. In my bedroom, I keep the ZZ plant and a monstera and a dracenia because they're really big statement plants and I've got sort of a bit of extra room. So I fill those areas with those big three plants. Um, it also means I'm not constantly, so, it means I'm not constantly bringing out little plants to have to water them so these big plants sit in saucers and I can just give them a plant, like a, a water when necessary. I also bring them into the shower just to give them a rinse like every sort of month or so just to wash their leaves. Um, but if I had lots of little plants in there I'd be constantly annoyed because you'd have to bring them to the sink or the shower to water them all, all at once. Okay, so if you understood any of that, good start. And I've got another video coming this week about specific plants that I got in a home base haul. I'm the haul girl now, I'm like like that basic white girl. Um, so look forward to that and I hope this has helped in some way to give you sort of an idea as to what to put house plants, as to what house plants to put where and how to start buying them and just how to enjoy house plants like them, not meant to be stressful. Plants are meant to give you life and energy and make things feel nice and green and fun and um, just to build a room essentially and I would probably say like I wouldn't unless <laughs> unless you're really competent at growing house plants I'd start with sort of three in each room because you're like if you're unless like because even at uni if you just have like an ensuite and your room three in each room you're already up to six so think about how quickly that builds and obviously if you've got a bigger house um, it's easier for you to move these plants around and water them and you're probably in longer so yeah there's that uh but once again i just wanted to stress that i'm not expecting people to have loads of space i'm not saying oh look at all this space i'm just trying to give an idea as to the separate areas that you put house plants in um because i know space costs a lot of money because there's not much of it so bum chin